I have good news for you today. God is our supply. I recently have come to this con conclusion. Life is constant demand. From the moment we are born, there's demand. we have demands. When I come out of my mother's womb, I have a demand for oxygen, I have a demand for warmth, I have a demand for nourishment. And God is previous. I read that one time, I can't remember who was the writer, but he said, God is previous. God is our supply. Let's go back and look at the Garden of Eden. Before God ever created man, he created the heavens and the earth. He created the light, the day, the night. He created the animals. He created the trees. He created the food. He created the water. Everything that man was going to need, he created. And then the last thing he created was man and woman. And then the next thing he did was rest. Was it because God was tired from speaking all those things into existence? I don't think so. I think he did that because that's the way he wanted us to live from a state of rest. In fact, when in the Old Testament, we see again and again until we were set over onto the sun calendar that things were done in the lunar um, uh, part of the, of the day. And in, the, in Genesis, it always says, and the morning and the evening, no, excuse me, and the evening and the morning were the first day, and the evening and the morning. So the rest always came first. We have a tendency to look at when the sun comes up and we get up, that's the beginning of our day. But actually our day began from a position of rest and out of that our day comes. And so when we see that God is a God of supply, it changes our whole frame of reference. I began to, as I was meditating on this, God showed me something that stress is caused when demand is put on a place of perceived lack. Not enough money, not enough time, not enough helpers, not enough supplies, not enough whatever. And so when that demand is put on a perceived lack, then stress comes out of that as, and we perceive that God is asking us to do the work. I have come to this point in my life for all my life, I have felt, and, back, and it was backed up by all the sermons I've heard and things even I've preached, that the demand was upon me, that I needed to prove that I had faith, that I needed to be a good soldier and stand up with whatever, that I was being tested, and everything was all about me. And since I have begun to see the gospel in a different way that it's all about Jesus Christ and about all that he's ever done. It takes the demand off of me and puts it back on where it belongs, him. He is previous. The word even tells us that Jesus in Revelation, that Jesus was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So even before man sinned, even before Adam gave it all up, the provision was already in place that the lamb was slain to provide for us. When Adam and Eve sinned and they fell, they, they uh, made fig leaves to cover themselves, to cover their sin, their self-effort, to see what they could do. But then God came and he had to go and kill animals and he put those bloody skins on them, smearing them in blood because the word says that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And even Jesus said in Matthew 26, verse 28, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. 
So Jesus right there was identifying that in the Old Testament, we had the blood of bulls and goats, which was not perfect. It only covered their sin. But Jesus' blood being shed was for the remission of our sins, for our sins to be washed away. And so God made provision. God is supply. In the last several months, there's been a lot of demand in my life. Uh, it started uh, earlier this year, found a leak in my water heater. The water had come in under my flooring. They had to take up all of my floor downstairs, all the wood flooring. They had to cut out some of the walls because they, were, they found mold. Then I had a general contractor came, came in and he found some wood rot in some places. And so that's going on. They're taking care of that, making these differences. My daughter, uh, one daughter found out that she needed about $700 worth of work done on her car. Uh, another daughter needed money to go on a senior trip. Um, uh, another daughter, we had another storm and a car, the tree fell on her car um, and caused damage. Um, and then the other day I'm sitting in my house and I look up after the, we, this bad storm we had that caused the tree to fall on our car, I looked up at my ceiling and I see water spots. So the demand, constant, something else. It's like I almost felt like Job every day, you know, in Job, the story of Job, that while one servant was telling him bad news, another servant came bringing other bad news. And it just seems like I've gone from one thing to another, to another, to another. I work in real estate and I had a deal that just refused to close. We finally closed that this week. But it's just constant, constant, constant. And so the pressure uh, on me was just tremendous. But I found, found myself that I was continually looking for me to have the answers, for me to be able to work it out. I was working as hard as I could, doing everything that I knew to do to bring this closing to pass, to get everything done in the house, but then there would be delays, things out of my control. And when God began to speak to me about him being our supply, I began to meditate on him being the supply, that he is previous. And here's a truth. You know, I grew up in the 60s and 70s when it was all about um, independence and, you know, that uh, particularly in the women's movement, you know, that, hey, we, we can do everything and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so that gets into your psyche more than you realize. And so when we also hear about God expecting us to do things and then we get the idea that we're supposed to get to a point that we don't really need God. He expects me to be a good soldier and he expects me. And so the pressure is put on me to perform. And I've begun to realize that God does not hold my weaknesses against me. You need to hear that. God does not hold my weaknesses against me. In fact, he's very aware of the fact that I need him. He just wants me to know that I know that I need him. And so as God began to speak to me about him being my supply, in the morning when I'd wake up and these things would start to run, want to run rampant through my mind and just be a continual stampede, I would lay in bed for a few minutes and I would picture in my mind like a, a, a tube or a hose being hooked up from God's vast supply into my spirit. And I would just suck up that supply. God is my supply. God is my supply. God is my supply. And every time since that God began to reveal that to me, every time something new would happen, I would go, God is my supply. God is my supply. Because just like I said, a man is put on a place of lack. I don't have any stress when I go to my water, um, to my sink, in the kitchen or the bathrooms for that matter. I have no stress about there being water coming out of that because I know there's an abundance of water that I'm hooked up to. Now, if there's not water, then I know that there's, we're on a community well, that something's happened and the water source has been cut, but then I know it's gonna be back on in a few hours. So I don't have stress that I'm, that I'm gonna starve or that I'm gonna be, you know, thirst to death or anything like that because I know there's abundance. We see it in the scriptures when the 5,000 uh, needed to be fed and Jesus was seeing what was really in their heart. What did they really believe? And so what happened? The little boy brought up his five loaves and two fishes. And so, so when they came to Jesus, they said, 
and he was saying, feed the multitude. They said, but we have nothing, all right, lack nothing, but five, these five little fish and two loaves. So they were looking at the crowd, the demand, and they were looking at their perceived little supply. But thank goodness for Jesus, because he was looking to his father for a uh, unlimited supply that all he did was pray. He blessed the bread and he blessed the fish and he break it, broke it. And he told the disciples to go out and pass it out. And I don't believe that when the disciples left Jesus that, that those baskets were overflowing. I believe that as they passed it down one row and one person would reach out and take what they needed and they didn't instruct them, okay, everybody just gets a bite, a nibble. Take what you need. They took out. So parent, you know, you got kids, so you go, okay, let me take out. I'm going to take out for my kids. Then you pass it to the next person. That person reaches in there. And I believe it multiplied as it went from person to person, from person to person and row to row. And then when it even got to the back, there was still something left in the basket that they could bring it up. And then they were able to give it back to the little boy, 12 back to, more, 12 baskets full, more than he had to begin with. Now let's compare that to Jesus' mother, Mary. In the first miracle that's recorded that Jesus did, he was at a wedding. Don't you just love it that Jesus was social, that Jesus, with all the things going on in the world, that people were dying, that there was sickness and disease and demons and all kinds of things going on, and yet Jesus was social, had friends, and was at uh, joyous events. I love that about the Lord. And so he was there and Mary came to him and all she stated was the problem. There is no wine. Then she told the servants, do whatever he tells you to do. And what did Jesus do? He turned the water into wine. I don't know, if, <laughs> maybe I'm the only one that does this, but do you ever pray and you feel like you have to have the answer to tell God how to answer your prayer? God, this has happened, so therefore I need this. Uh, like a bill comes in, you don't have the money. God, look at this bill. I need money to pay. Instead of just going, Father, I know you're my supply, and here's the bill. You know, God may want to have that person call you and say, you know, I just want to bless you, and I'm going to write that bill off. But if I'm asking for God to do it a certain way, do I then confine God? to answer my prayer in the way that I thought it should be answered. So therefore it takes away the miraculous because I don't, for the most part, think in the miraculous. So take it like your child is out riding his bike and the tire keeps going flat. And so the little child comes to you and says, mommy, daddy, um, uh, fill up my tire, fill up my tire. And so I could fulfill the child's request and fill the tire up with air. But in my infinite wisdom as a parent, as that tire continues to go down and continues to go down, I'm going to either replace the tire or I'm going to look for the cause of the leak, whether it's a nail or something in the tire that causes the tire to go down. And so the child comes to me for the supply, but I have answers greater than my child could fathom. God is our supply. If we were standing at the Red Sea, even after God has demonstrated over and over and over with the plagues and kept us free and kept us protected and then set us free with garments and gold and silver, and then we come up to the sea, do we believe that our God can open up the sea because he's our supply? And we see that they didn't. They were very human, just like you and I. <laughs> I had a cousin one time. Uh, that something had happened in our family's life and God had supplied whatever was needed at the time, I don't remember. And so I remember her going to my dad and she said, oh, how wonderful God was, you'll never doubt God again. And my dad just laughed and he said, no, the next time we come up to a situation, I will have the same choice again to either believe God or freak out. And so no matter what God's done for us in the past, you, we still have to be in faith and believe and, and it's, don't look at your faith as, okay, I've just got to say the right things or do the right things for God to do this as if it's a reward. But I believe that God is my supply because God is my supply. It's not the right thing to say because I'm earning something. I say that 
because I believe it. My dad used to say, just in case you think nobody listens to you, after you die, people will quote you. So <laughs> my dad used to say that we were like tubes of toothpaste, that what, whenever we got squeezed, would come out what was really in our hearts. <laughs> and it's so true. What happens to us when we find ourselves in situations, and sometimes it's overwhelming, I am coming to believe, I'm coming to know that God is my supply, that he's previous. Do you know in the, in the feeding of the 5,000 and feeding of the 4,000 that God actually, or Jesus used more to feed the 4,000 than he used the 5,000? In the 5,000, I believe there was five loaves and two fish, and in the feeding of the 4,000, I believe there were seven fish. So there's, there's no rhyme or reason because we're looking at God. And he is able to take out of things that are unseen and make visible. For example, uh, we see two things that are invisible that become visible. We see that when hydrogen and oxygen comes together, when there's two parts of hydrogen and one part oxygen, it makes water. I don't see the hydrogen, I don't see the oxygen, but when the two combine, I see the result. I see the water that comes. So God takes those things that we're not even aware of, that we don't even see, and he can supply our need. He supplies, Philippians tell us, that my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to my need, but according to his riches. That's like me going to my mom and saying, Mom, I need... Um, um, $47.50 to pay a bill. I'm just really low right now. Could you, could you help me? And my mom would go, well, you know what? Here you go. Here's $60. You guys go out and get some ice cream. Meets my need, but not according to my need, according to the abundance that my mom has in her hand that she would give and never withhold anything. God is the same way. The word says that he has given to us all things, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Isn't food part of life? Isn't clothing part of life? Isn't, if, isn't having a place to live, a roof over our head part of life? Yes, God has given us those things. God has provided those things. God is our supply. When God appeared to Moses on the mount, and was telling him to go speak to Pharaoh. And Moses was talking with God and asking questions. And he said, who shall I tell him you are? What's your name? And God said his name was, I am. Meaning, I am whatever you need me to be whenever you need me to be it. Think of that. I am whatever you need me to be whenever you need me to be it. I know I've at times have disconnected God from my need. How? Well, um, for example, uh, God, I need money. God, I need healing. I need wisdom. I need peace. And so it's like I'm expecting God to give me that apart from himself. That, that um, and so it's almost like I don't need him uh, I'm, ju I'm just going to whisper this in your ear. I want you to take care of it, but I really don't need you because I need those things instead. But you see, we have to know he is. I am. It is in him we find those things. I realized that it, when all these things were going on, and I've still got some stuff going on, but I'm in a different place. But as this stuff is going on, I begin to realize that I wanted all the things to be taken care of so I could be at peace. So therefore, because of that, I began to realize I was looking to no stressful situations to be my peace, not Jesus. But the word says Jesus is my peace. So what's the, deal? What's the importance of that? Let me tell you why it's really important. Because I began to realize then I wasn't needing Jesus. I was looking to the lack of circumstances. 
And therefore, because I was looking to lack of circumstances and the circumstances wouldn't change and the circumstances wouldn't stop and the circumstances wouldn't go away, I refused to receive his peace. Now, I wasn't sitting there going, I'm not taking your peace, I'm not taking your peace. I'm, but because I continually thought of my situations, I continually let them put the pressure on me, then I would refuse to receive his peace. But when I began to cast my care on him, then the pre I let the pressure be on him, not on me. He is my supply. He is my peace. He is my healing. He is whatever I need him to be whenever I need him to be it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So when I'm needing truth, I need Jesus. When I'm needing direction, I need Jesus. Everything that I need is in him, not separate from him. Thank God that he is so wonderful. Thank God that he has broad shoulders, that he has thick skin, so to speak, that I can lean upon him. You know, in the Old Testament, if you read it, I believe it's Ezekiel 28. If you read in there, it's 28 or 38. It has the um, characteristics or things of the high priest. And you know, the high priest wore uh, stones, six stones on his uh, left shoulder, six stones on his right shoulder, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And he also wore uh, a, a breastplate that had uh, stones representing the 12 uh, tribes of Israel. And you know what that tells me? That tells me that the weight was on his shoulder and they were ever on his mind, in his heart. Jesus is our high priest. And he has taken that position that he, and even Isaiah tells us, the government is on his shoulders, that I can cast my care on him and I trust him to know that he cares for me. God is our supply. God is previous. Whatever you need for him today, become supply-minded. That God is the supply, that there's nothing too great for him, that he still works in the miraculous, and when you come and just present the problem, then you leave God open to take care of it however God can do it. He wants to show up. He wants to take the, the load off of our shoulders and be our supply. I don't know about you, but that is great news to me. God bless you as you know that God is your supply. Take the demand off of you and let the supply of God fill every need. God bless you. Thank you.